Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. It is another very warm day, and it's still humid, but it's not like it was the last couple days. Still hot, but not unbearably so. But anyways, I hope that everybody has a really good day. I hope that you'll want to stick around for a little bit of my day. And I want to show you my tomato plant because I think it's going to survive. But what do you think? I think that it was going to die. It would have died because it's been, this is going to be day three. But I noticed that this morning, it actually was perkier than what it looks right now. So I just kind of was wondering whether or not the, the sun is just kind of like, you know, it's trying to recover. So maybe the, the sun is making it a little bit less perky because it was really different when I looked at it this morning compared to how it even looks now. Hopefully it's going to survive. What do you do? Live and learn. That's what you do. You live and learn. But anyways, just wanted to show you that for a minute. And yeah, I'll talk to all of you in just a little while. Today, what I want to make are some no-bake cookies. But these no-bake cookies are a little bit different from probably what you're used to because it does not take regular sugar. And so that just, it makes it a little bit healthier because it doesn't have such a, you know, high amount of sugar. <laughs> But anyways, what it does take is a half a cup of coconut palm sugar and 20 drops of the stevia. Now, what I like about this recipe is that you can adapt this recipe according to your dietary needs. So if you are non-dairy, you can substitute your milk for coconut milk, almond milk. You can substitute the butter for your coconut oil. So there is um, a lot of a lot of ways for you to adapt. Peanut butter, you can use almond butter or any butter of your choice, whether that be like cashew butter or, or whatever it is that you prefer. So this is adaptable. It also can be gluten-free if you make sure that your oats are gluten-free. What we're going to do is we have, I have three cups of gluten-free oats and I am going to go ahead and add my nut butter and why I call it a nut butter is because it's mine happens to be peanut butter but hey maybe you or family someone has a peanut allergy and you would prefer to use something else but anyways we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna set this aside because what we're gonna do now is get out our a pan and we are going to be in our in our pan we are going to be adding our coconut palm sugar which is a half a cup and we are going to be adding let me see i'm sorry just want to make sure i got everything the cocoa powder which is a third of a cup and i am using regular conventional butter real butter please don't use margarine um, either use coconut oil or butter and this is a half a cup and if you're using coconut oil melt your coconut oil for your measurement we're going to use two pinches of sea salt and then we are going to add our milk which like I said you can use almond milk I'm using raw real milk I should raw <laughs> cow's milk it's still real I'm sorry <laughs> what can I say and then we're going to add our 20 drops of our stevia now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my stove and we're going to I'm going to stir it really frequently because I don't want it to burn so I'll bring you on over there and all I'm doing right now is just kind of breaking up that butter a little bit so that it can start to melt a little bit quicker and give it in a nice little stir. And what we're basically doing here is, is we're just going to 
You get this up to a boil and let it boil for about a minute and a half. And we are still gonna be adding vanilla to this. We're gonna be adding two teaspoons of vanilla, but we're gonna wait until this has been removed from the heat. Now, one of the reasons why I'm making this is because my husband has a sweet tooth. So I wanted to make something that he would be able to enjoy that wasn't gonna have quite the amount of sugar that a normal no-bake cookie has. And I also wanted to, at this time, give you an update on how his appointment went yesterday. And it went really well. The doctor said that he really thought that by the um, end of this month, the first part of August, that he would be able to put him into a cast that would come up over the front of the knee, but the back of the cast would be below the knee. So he would be able to have some bend in his knee. And that was really good news because they took an x-ray and everything is healing really well. So we are very, very pleased and very thankful for that news. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is one of our concerns was that he had a convention that is required by our denomination to go to your first year as a pastor. And the church had even already purchased his airline ticket to Colorado. Well, he ended up calling and the um, headquarters of our denomination, we belong to the Christian and Missionary Alliance, and they said, oh, no, 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 no. You come next year, we're, we're, we'd be more concerned about, you know, your healing and, and all that. We, we, you come next year, if you can get the airline to, you know, work with you, then don't worry about it. We'll, we'll just, you'll, you'll come your second year. So he ended up calling up the airline because um, there was what the church had purchased, um, a cancellation fee of 40 some dollars that they had paid for. Well here, that fee was for something just like this. No, you don't get your money back, but you have a year to use that ticket. So all he has to do is call the airlines by April of next year and rebook his ticket to Colorado because the convention's at the same time, at the same place every year. So that was really good news. So we're not out any money, and he's not going to have to worry about going there in a cast. So anyways, I am just going to pay attention to this before it decides to burn. And yeah, let's get back to our cookies. So right now, it's at a nice boil. And I'm just cooking this for about a minute and a half. And this is a good guess because I was not paying attention like I should have. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to, I think that that's coating pretty good. Let me see my spoon here. Yes. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to add our two teaspoons of vanilla. Give that a quick little stir. Okay, so here's our oats with our peanut butter. Now we are just going to put this into our oats. And then give this a nice stir. So that looks pretty good. And I am going to take you over there and get them on that wax paper. Now the size of the cookies that you want to make is all up to you. This is not going to flatten out like your regular, so you're going to want to slightly flatten those out and shape them. And that's all because of the sugars that we're not using, I guess is what I should say, huh? But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in my refrigerator um, to cool. And once they're cooled, They'll be hardened. And I did want to show you, these are very easy to work with. All I did was because I had nine more to make, I just put it right on top of the other one, so I only have to put in one tray. 
it's not going to hurt them because this doesn't have the heat that a normal no bake with all that sugar would have. And yeah, my refrigerator is telling me, shut the doors. <laughs> so I'll stick these in and I'll talk to you in just a little while. For today's devotion, we will be reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. The word self-control implies that there is a struggle with self. That there is something about self that needs to be denied or controlled. The Apostle Paul compares self-control to that of a Greek athlete. Only our goal is eternal, not earthly. I wanted to make a note here that the King James Version uses the word temperate for the word self-control. Having self-control will determine whether we will do well or have serious problems in our Christian life. It will affect how we manage our time, our money, our ability to overcome temptation, and most importantly, whether or not we spend regular time in God's word and in prayer. The Lord knew we needed self-control to be able to resist the lusts of the flesh, and we cannot resist our old nature in our own willpower. There is a fight within the heart of every believer for control. And we are unable within our own strength, our own self-will power, to consistently say no every time. There is a big difference between fleshly self-willpower, and godly self-control. And it's fundamental that we understand that the Christian view of self-control is, it's a gift. It's one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as we learned last week in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, on the fruit of the Spirit. And the last characteristic listed is self-control. Now, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 29, Paul declares, To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. And we must also strive. I like the way the English Standard Version reads for this verse, and so I'd like to read that. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Paul is telling us that he labors, he toils by the power of Christ, not his own. And the Lord has shown me that the quality of self-control is lacking in many Christian lives today. And it's lacking in my own. This was difficult for me to see. And the Lord has used this past week to show me my own need in this area. That we Christians, we're getting defeated in many areas of our lives because we lack self-control. For the reason is that without self-control, it is impossible to walk with God in any great degree or grow into full maturity as a Christian. Without self-control, there can be no great faith, no great love, no great spiritual fire for God. Without self-control, we're spinning our spiritual wheels. By God's spiritual power and help, we take power over all thoughts 
and actions that do not bring glory to God. We take control of our self and do not let our mind run loosely, but have the spiritual discipline to keep our heart on track with the heart of God. We take control of our self through the power of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And I wanted to read Galatians 5.25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And may our lives bring glory to Him. God bless, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Music